Hello everyone, welcome to the Commando Cast. I'm Andrew. And I'm Mike, and today we're going to go over the Portland Regional and all the stuff that went down over the weekend. All right, so this last weekend was the Portland Regional, Portland, Oregon, USA. Uh, both Mike and I attended, as long as, as well as what seventy some odd other people. Yeah, it was a I lot. Think it was like 76, 72, something yeah. like that. Anyway, slightly over seventy people, um, which unfortunately meant that not everybody left with the Vader promo, which I think was about the only negative on the day. Yeah, and even that was like, what are you gonna do? Right? Yeah, no, kids, I mean, you're, I mean, yeah, you're gonna do what you're gonna do, right. right? And that's what I'm saying. Like, if that's the only complaint, top not. So, yeah. what do you think this weekend? Uh, uh, I thought it was wonderful. <laughs> like, it was just, like last year, it was it was very well done. Um, the the food was the food was good and it was on time. And, and um, Sean, kudos, man, you, you, you did you put up a good tournament again. And thanks to the TO who volunteered, um, you know, who didn't play. It always sucks to not get to play. Um, like we really have nothing controversial to talk about, which. I think anytime you can have an event that size and not have someone freak out or have some sort of incident, I think is great. And I think yeah. it really well, speaks. at least publicly. I mean, right. you know, we don't know all of the details sure. of every single match, but right. there was nothing that people were talking about as they right. were leaving, it, at, least I, to, at least to our knowledge. And I think that speaks a lot to our uh, our region and our culture. Like just the, that we are, we this this community, I feel is is very tight knit, all the way from from the guys coming. They, they, we had guys driving all the way from Boise, Idaho, mm -hmm. and they. They come. Boise guys were here. The Seattle guys yeah. were here. The, the Boise guys come and just take our lunch like every time there's a major tournament. And but they're always super gracious and they're they're super good players. They drive all the way up here, stay the weekend. The guys from Washington came down uh, when we went up there. They were great. So I just I just can't say it how much it was so fun. And even though I missed the cut, I still had a wonderful time. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. Um, what, I, I don't know what the final cut... I haven't seen a final breakdown of the field. Yeah. Uh, but there was a lot of Vader Greedo. A lot more than, I'll be honest, I expected. If if I recall, there were three Snoke th or two Snoke three wides and one Tarkin Snoke in the rest of the field. So it was, it was four... You mean in the top eight? Yeah, in the top eight. The top eight was 50% Vader Greedo. There were three Snoke Sienna Traders okay. and one Snoke Tarkin. And that was Cody again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got you. All right. Um, but I, I was still surprised how much Vader Greedo. I, I guess when I was building my deck going in, I, I obviously had some anti Vader tech in there. Right. Um, but I wasn't expecting to see as many as I did. But what I, what at least walking around the room from what I observed myself, it was interesting because it seems like in the past when we were talking about Vader Greedo, I think we thought that you know generally fifty percent of the field was going to be Vader Greedo. And inter interestingly enough, I don't think 50% of the room was Vader Greedo, but at the top, it was hugely weighted for Vader Greedo. Right. So I think that goes back to the anti of what we were talking about before, where a lot of people are just showing up with Vader Greedo because it's easy. I think most of the majority of the players who were on Vader Greedo, or a larger percentage of the players who were on Vader Greedo, were there because they knew how to play Vader Greedo. Yeah. And, and I, that, that always, it always boils down to that for me, is when... I would say there was. I think there was seventy-ish people. I, more than seventy, I know that. No, I would it, say it was just. It was just over seventy. I, I would say fact. forty-five people in that room. If this is this is again speaks to the quality of our 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 players in this area. But forty-five people in that room could have won that tournament. I believe. Like sure, on any given day, depending yeah. on how the meta shifts. Sure, like I mean, yeah. there was forty-five regional winning tournament level players in that room and then there was probably 20 or 25 people that were there to drink beer and have cider right I mean that's just kind of the way it worked why can't um, you do both right why can't you do both Sean prove that right <laughs> um, so I, when when it's such a large contingent uh, from Washington comes down and as a team they they work on a deck and they mm -hmm. run a deck together and then they're all good players on top of it I just think naturally you're going to see the, the the top shake out. Like we, that's one thing. And this may be a different episode, but we as a team did not we did not bring a team deck. We 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 tried to and just didn't kind of right, align right. that way. And, and a lot of it has to do with we we have different play styles and right. tastes and stuff. But I mean, they brought a deck and tuned it, and it was brutally 
slick. Like it was so. It was that was that had to be the alpha version of Vader that we'll ever see again. Yeah. Like it, Vader will never be that good again as he was. Yeah. This now, I mean, there there were a couple differences. Like uh, <clears throat> Shane, the guy who I played in top eight, ended up uh, taking third. He had a very different deck than, um, like, he was playing a bland, band in all hope. He only had one copy of the Saber. I mean, obviously, he's running Fist because right. you have to, right? Um, that I don't believe he was playing Friends in High. Hmm. And um, he was using that slot, I believe, for Band in all hope. And it allowed him to play a very interesting, choky version where he would just kind of keep you off the resource and be like, oh, I'm sorry, I only hit you for five this turn. So did, right? when you played him, you, you had mentioned to me that you got choked. Was that, did he abandon all hope in those, in those that those Yeah, it was between, games? so, you know, the, like the very first round of the very first game, I opened with the friends in low places, and I look at his hand and I'm like, well, I'm screwed. Because he had a beguile, and I knew he was going to be able to keep me off of Sienna mm-hmm. to get money, right? So, but there's nothing I could do about it. So I just kind of had to play into it and know I was going to get my dice removed and hope I could just re-roll through it. So I just kind of had to plow through it. It was the only chance I had. Right. Um, or at least the only, it's the only thing I could figure out at the time. Maybe right. there were different ways to do it. But um, so, and he, then he was able to, I mean, he, he was consistently able to set me up for that. Plus he, he very intelligently used his indirect mm-hmm. placement with his Vader reset or his Greedo reset right. or his Vader reset Greedo kill. Mm-hmm. Right. So, uh, mad props to Shane. He was a fantastic player. Yeah. He played that very well. Yeah, and it's funny. I was considered like I, I, you guys have probably heard me say that the Washington guys like to mill. Um, Shane is like a miller. Like he's he's one of the people. Like I always like I when I think of Shane, I think of milling my hand and killing me with mill. And then when I saw him sit down with the uh, the Vader Greedo, I was like, whoa, this must be really good to get him off. Well, like, so you know that that makes a lot more sense because he was. I mean, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but he was like playing a control evader, yeah. mm-hmm. right? And again, he was like, okay, I'll only hit you for four or five this turn. Like, so it was like a patient vader almost. Yeah, like, yeah, sure. Okay. Whatever. I mean, it, it, was, it was very well done. Um, his deck was set up to do what he did. It worked out very well against the three wide. Um, so were there any decks out there uh, that you saw? Obviously, there's a ton of Vader Greedo, and you were on three wide Snoke. Um, were there any decks out there that maybe surprised you? Or you, uh, so I know I, you were kind of at the top all day. So I was. I, I didn't really run into anything non-meta. Um, I, I do want to say one thing. I thought so. I ran into Joseph, uh, one of the guys from our play group, uh, Dice Commando. I ran into him second round, and he was on Qui Gon and Ayla, who I thought was going to be super strong. Right. And he did not do. He's a fantastic player, and he did not do very well during the day. I don't know whether just rolls didn't go his way, or if it was just bad matchups or what. Um, I was very surprised that. Qui Gon did not do well considering how many Vaders there were, right? yeah. Because I find Qui Gon does pretty well against Vader, right? It's just natural mitigation at all times, right? You yeah. just well, it's just yeah, you can just soak the damage, right? right. So, um, I was very surprised on that one, but no. So aside from that one, I saw Vader Greedo, Vader Greedo. I saw Shadowcaster, which I was super teched for Shadowcaster, right? Um, <laughs> I, I smash vehicles, yeah, all day. Uh, it was that was kind of interesting. Like I, I. I didn't really practice that much against vehicles. I, I don't know why, I just didn't. And I sat down across which, from an Aiden, uh, mother and Aiden deck that was mm-hmm. running AR into Dooku Solar Sailor. And to be clear, so everyone is aware, Mike was on Snoke DJ. D- DJ, yes, sorry, I assume all of you know exactly what I'm doing. Uh, so I, I ran into him at one point and first round vandalized his Solar Sailor. And although the game was still relatively close because he still had DH 17s and, and sure. uh, energy bows, but just smashed him. And then another, another round, um, it was a, a Fire Spray deck, fully loaded Fire Spray. Or you were able to vandalize, vandalize it? Vandalize it, yeah. yeah I, mean, I find it hard to vandalize the four <coughs> dice. Like, yeah, it was, it was, oh no, I'm, excuse me. That was a hover tank. He hover tanked. Uh, the, the Umbaran. He hover yeah, tanked, yeah, yeah. loaded it, and I I yeah. just killed it, right? Because it was three. Sure. Um, and uh, I, I will, though, I will tell you, I'll, I will I will smash a fire spray j- as quickly as I will an Umbaran. No, I just, I just, all I was saying is I find it hard to get the four dice in the table and not have one of them roll enough that my opponent wants to oh, remove it, yeah. right? So. Those decks are so laser focused on what they're doing, though, I think. And, and my, my dice aren't necessarily as. I mean, if I roll out DJ and they don't remove one of them immediately, mm-hmm. right? That means they're more interested in what they're doing. I see. Um, so when I don't Snoke and I roll out, I roll out um, Snoke instead. It, I think it almost throws them off because like, why didn't you? Why didn't I you see. So, it, which to me would make me that would send up an alarm to me if I was a vehicle player. Like, holy crap, they just got. Um, now I was using Vandalize, which cost me dice. And what was your? 
tech for dealing with those. Well, I, I ran uh, two things. I ran Flames of the Past. Flames of the Past actually was more for Vader's Fist. Mm -hmm. um, and then I ran Sabotage for mainly Shadowcaster, to be honest. I thought we were going to see a lot more Shadowcaster than we saw. Um, I was able to take uh, Darth YouTube. I was able to get his Shadowcaster off, which pretty much ended his right. game. Right. Um, not pretty much. It ended his game. Yeah. Right? It's such a feel bad moment for the so. Shadowcaster player, man. When that thing goes down, yeah. uh, that I like that deck. It feels really strong, but it is it is so fragile. Like if because if they don't slow down in time to put the to put the shield generator down, um, it feels like it's too slow at that point, mm -hmm. and they have to spend the resource to play the shield generator, which makes it harder for them to play the the Shadowcaster. Um, if if they don't do all that and they just risk it, man, you're just. It can, I just feel like if you're if you sit down across from a yellow deck and you're running one of those vehicles decks, you you have to absolutely wait. You have to wait, and you know. Well, he he did right. It didn't happen until round three. He finally got on the table round three, and I was finally able to take it out at the beginning of round four. I just claimed and I said I'm going to take six damage and then win, right? <laughs> um, so, but because the thing was, he had front he had scruffied turn one mm -hmm. for supports, and he got my fire spray. And he knew I had it in my hand. Okay, so but, then he so just, he knew it was coming. Right. He was trying to play around it, and eventually he just couldn't. Yeah. Cat and mouse. Or, you know, we were just going back. And well, forth was and he playing? So if we're talking about Darth, this is Darth YouTube. Yeah. So was it a four wide or was he? No, he was on straight up. Oh, straight up. Okay. Straight up L three engineer. So and, and that's really hard because that deck doesn't do anything if you don't have the like. Yeah. It doesn't. I, I do. Th I do think he had the one copy of the. Um, Naboo fighter. Yeah, and that's maybe that's the key is you're like, okay, I'm gonna play the Naboo fighter down and not use the AR. I wouldn't have fallen for that though, right? But, but at least yeah. he would have had something to do some right. damage with. Right. Well, to be honest, he actually did a lot of damage because those engineers have two indirect sides oh, and true. it adds up. That's true. Very so, because um, I was just taking it to the face because right. I wanted four cards in my hand. Right. <laughs> right. So, uh, any anyway, um, yeah. So I I was pleased with. Um, how things went. Um, so for those who don't know, I went 8-0 in Swiss the first day, which was fantastic, right? right. Um, and a lot of that, I think, though, a lot of the reason I went 8-0 was because of the surprises that I had teched, which is why I think I got crushed so hard on day two, is because once people knew what I was running and they could see my deck list, right. it didn't work. Yeah. Right? So, um, and that is part A. Part B is because Shane just played it. He played it perfectly, right? The, right? the choke on that, he just played it perfectly. So... Um, yeah, so went top eight, which was great. Got my play mat. Woo! <laughs> yeah, I had a very different day. Uh, so I went six of two, and my only two losses on the day were from Washington folks running uh, Vader Greedo. Mm -hmm. um, you guys may have heard me mention before, the last couple of big tournaments I've had, I've had like major mental meltdowns, like in the middle of games where I just made huge play errors. That actually didn't happen to me. Saturday, I, yeah, I, nice. I I played clean. I missed one DJ active, like one DJ trigger uh, against when I was oh, playing. Oh, you mean to deal indirect? Yeah, I was playing against Ingrid. Uh, she's a Washington player who was playing um, the Vader Greedo. Uh, also top aided. Yeah, right. And I I think I was so just I was so bl I had my blinders on to how I was going to handle her dice, and I just didn't even think about it. So other than that, I played really clean. Um, I had an unfortunate pair down. Um, when you came, and, five. yeah. When yeah. you came and talked to me, that was actually the lowest table I had been at. And when I sat down against that gentleman who was running mill, um, he had told me that I got pared down, and I knew I was in trouble at that point. Um, and my first round opponent, who is generally very dependable to get lots of wins in the tournament, um, he he had a terrible day, and I j I actually don't think that I there was any circumstance where I could have not gone six and one and, and like I had to go six and one at that point. Seven and one. Yes, yeah, seven and one, excuse me. Yes, yeah, seven and one. And um and it's funny because I think the same exact thing happened to to Sean. Um I, I think I remember him saying that that he had gotten pared down at one point. I and, see. And he was like one slot or two slots behind me. We were I just see. kind of in the same boat. Yeah. Um, well I mean eight eight rounds of destiny is a lot of destiny and there's gonna be a lot of people at six and two, right? Yeah. So and then there were. Um it just kind of felt bad that yeah, I no, knew I immediately, just, like at that point, that I was in trouble. Right, um, and and you said that on the video. Right. So for, for uh, we also have just a fun little video recap. We shot some clips yeah. on Saturday. It was well done, by the way. Oh, it thanks. Was, it was funny. Um, yeah, I tried for a little here. Yeah. <laughs> Sean's breakfast. I like that. <laughs> or Yeti's breakfast. That was my favorite. So anyway, yeah. So um, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I had I had a good time. Um, I agree. I also don't believe I made any play mistakes mm -hmm. on the first eight. Um, I did make a play mistake against Shane. Um, he went to discard, 
and I didn't shuffle my hand beforehand and he went right to it. He like, he knew exactly where I had like my preferred card mm-hmm. and I didn't shuffle beforehand. He went right to it. And as soon as I did, I was like, Oh no, he's going to pick it. And he did. And I was like, Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> so again, just well played. Right. Um, big mistake on my part. Yeah, though. it happens. Um, oh, yeah. And we had, our, I, th- I thought our team did fairly well. Um, Sean was number, he went seven and one was yeah. the second seed yep. in the, after Swiss. Um, I was I was in top ten. Um, ben, who is like a, a newer member of our team, who, right. he was one. He finished ninth. He got the the worst, the loneliest spot, the ninth <laughs> spot um, in the world. So um, we, I thought we, I thought we did pretty well. Um, I was actually surprised not to see Alex um, up there. He he was running the best deck, and he is. Don't tell him what, I said well, what's this. What's the best deck? He's running Vader. I mean, oh, he's yeah. Vader Greedo. Yeah. You know, and he's one of the best players that I know. Because um, there's there's a lot of people who would say that this. I mean, obviously not a PDX like Vader Greedo did its thing. Right. But there's a lot of people who would say that the Snoke Sienna Trader deck is the best. Um, I mean, I pivoted. Like we we were all playing on Friday night the night before, mm-hmm. and I was on. I was pretty sure I was going to go Han Biggs Falcon, and uh, I just I looked at what was going on and I said, all right, this meta is health, so I went with the three wide health. And I took a lot of, I took at least three or four or maybe even five Fear and Dead Men, right? It's just... I, I, I don't know. I feel like a player, a player like you, who I've played a lot of Destiny with you, um, you you are a sinister person when it comes to rolling <laughs> dice. Like you, Thank you. You are plotty and you're very good at this game. And I don't think that your best work is done when you just go... I'm gonna roll out three things and cross my fingers that they all hit dam- like damage. Like I don't think that's your. It, is it powerful? Yes. Is it more powerful powerful in your hands? I would say so. Um, mainly because you also know some of the tricks. But the the gist of that deck is roll good, win. Like it's yeah. it's that's that's the gist of it. I mean that's that's fair. But but that's the gist of Vader Greedo too. But what we saw this weekend is there's a lot more to it than that, right? True. So I, I I don't know. I mean, like I said, I I went home that night and said, okay, this isn't gonna work. Mm-hmm. Um, I drove to the tournament with a Rend in my box in case I, because I, I was thinking about playing Rend for the Snoke Tarkin right. matchup. Um, yeah, I got Rended. That was I actually I, I, saw I, Rend I, played I, on I, me. I kind of wish I'd pocketed one Rend. I just didn't know where to put it because um, I wanted that bubble shield because that bubble shield was basically an extra force illusion. Um, so I, I'm glad I pocketed. So you that. did play bubble shield. The, the I one? pocketed one bubble okay. shield. Yeah. Interesting. Or I shouldn't say pocket. That implies cheating. <laughs> um, I slotted <laughs> right. a bubble shield, right? right. So that was, that was smart. Yeah. Um, actually, like Brenton brought like a little bit of weird spice, right? Mm-hmm. He was playing Balatik. Yeah. So of... he's, yeah, East Snoke, Sienna, Balatik. Okay. Um, so I thought that was super cool in the morning, and then I actually started thinking about it later in the day. And like the majority of the damage I did was indirect, and Ball has got that plus two. So if you're resetting him, you're hoping for that 16% chance of getting the one, or maybe you're hoping for a dollar, I guess. Well, what I, my question is, was he playing upgrades? Like, was he playing the hand cannon or, or something that would... that would? Because, I mean, ball is one die, isn't... I right. Mean, I mean, it's not great. Um, he no, does that's what I'm saying with the plus two on there. It, it actually is right. bad. He, does, he has the focus side, which is good. You, you, never mind the money. All well, the focus um, is true. But, I mean, and maybe it was a head fake. Maybe it was to get people to go after Bala instead of. Well, I, I'm pretty sure they did, right? I mean, CM. but that's the thing. Like, you're relatively consistently losing against Vader Greedo. You're consistently one guy either dies or gets very close to death on turn one. Like, that's just the way it is. Right. And Bala's only got the eight. I think Bala goes down often. So you are not allowed to play Sebulba anymore. And run Sienna because of the the nerf, correct? The the point because yeah, the is nine twelve. Okay, um, so yeah, so once yeah, Snoke went to fourteen. You right. you, were, you had to run. A, a well, I mean, ball. you could run better rival. Oh no, yeah, you could. You could yeah. run better rivalry. I, I suppose. I don't think that. Yeah. I don't think it's worth it for Sebulba. I mean, I, the the trader is pretty nice because. So I, I was not playing mind trick. But, oh, that's the best trick in that deck. Come on. Yeah, but that's 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 the play, right? Is you trade her in and then make them activate and then mind trick, right? Um, but that's your full turn of resources. True. So, I mean, granted, you can make other money, but, um, you know, a lot of times you need that $1 for the chance cube. Sure. It's fruit more important. So. Yeah, and I struggled with my, because I've been running the, um, I've been running Snoke and uh, Battle Droid and Bazine. Mm-hmm. And that, the um, chance cube is really good in that deck because it can make you a ton of money, right? But there's always that weird position where 
I played Chance Cube, and I have to save a resource to roll it, to roll it back out. Sure. But what I started to do was I didn't really care anymore. I'm like, fine, I'll bounce it back to my hand and just play it at a, at a later mm-hmm. later time when I when I do have the money. Um, so it, it, once I kind of loosened up on, oh, I have to get the Chance Cube and I have to roll it out immediately, it became a, I, I thought it came a lot stronger. Um, I actually ended up having an impromptu conversation with Cody. Um, and he was actually surprised. Uh, C- Cody won the Washington and yeah, this, Vancouver. This is, and this is Cody Hill. He was uh, second place overall. He was playing uh, Snoke Tarkin. Yeah. So I, he might have been one of two Snow Tarkins. I did in not the see very many there. Yeah. And I was kind of surprised on that. And it was one of the reasons that deck was one of the reasons why I decided to go with with Snoke and uh, DJ because I feel like I have a really good matchup against that because I have a lot of good mass removal. Sure. And I Makes mean, I, I did. Um, so when I he was surprised there wasn't more. I was surprised there wasn't more. Um, and I think, and, and I mean, I, the only losses I took were to the Vader decks. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I still think I performed pretty well. But I, I was surprised that that deck wasn't more prevalent. I mean, because it is super strong. It's it's aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. So, what is your take that we're basically back on Snoke 3? I mean, it, it, it <laughs> and, and this isn't necessarily a Snoke comment, right? Sure. But every single meta we've had even arguably awakenings now granted i realize that vader won the first world i get that right. but almost not almost every single meta we've had we've ended up on a three wide rainbow yeah, oh that's that's actually not true awakenings was uh phasma trooper ball so that was not rainbow yeah but, but that but, was a lot harder to do yeah, yeah, yeah. right back so then. okay right. so awakenings aside right right we keep ending up on these three wide rainbows in some form or another because FN was like the sort of rebellion three wide rainbow, right? Was so like it the, was uh, uh, FN sister and trooper. No. Oh wait, no, oh, Bala big, FN, Bala FN, yeah. Bala FN sister, nice right? Sister, yeah. Oh yeah. god, that dick. That's yeah, brilliant. and then any anyway. So yeah. it just seems like we keep ending up on this, which I, I get it. It makes sense, right? You can pack all of the, we can say amazing cards, brokenness, whatever you right. want to say. You can tech it all in there, right? So, I mean, it makes sense. But we always end up on the villain, too. And does it really just boil down to the Zeocast removal cards? Like, he doesn't like you? I mean, is that really what just fuels the villain to be so better than a hero? I, that, that, you could be honest something. I mean, I think that's a, certainly a, a, an argument for that. Um, at, at the core of this game, it's, it's really a math game. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, really, right? We, we're trying to get to a certain number of damage, right? And the higher that number is, the better off that you are. And sure. Three wides are naturally going to be better at that. And there has been traditionally cheaper... It Traditionally, there's been cheaper villain ways to do that. Although that's less so anymore. And with a lot of these cards kind of cycling out, um, I, I don't think you'll see that as much. But, I mean, you you give this many people that, that much platform to speak to each other and to deck build and to and to work on it together they're going to come up with the best mathematical combination which just happens to be the most health is, i mean generally is well i mean health health is health is your lifeblood right, right. I, I completely yeah no i mean i i understand the why yeah thing. it's just you know we keep ending up there and i mean then snoke adds a new equation to the game which is trading one for three no matter what you're doing, you're trading one for three. <laughs> right, so true. Yep, 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 yep. Right. So, um, um, and even in two, I like when we went through the R two P two meta, right? That behaved like a three wide as far as health because it just tanked and tanked and tanked. Like it just took shields and shields and shields over and over again mm-hmm. and made it very itself very hard to kill. So, I mean, maybe that really is the you know the 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 future of well not the future maybe it is just what is the best in the game yeah I, I always found it interesting though I think the most oppressive deck I, I've ever played against was a two wide guns heavy um, Daniel used to run it it was Mother Talzin and oh, Aura Sing Aura Sing yeah it, that it was, deck was awesome it was super light right in the in the in the loafers right I mean it, it only had like what nineteen hit points I think or twenty hit points. I think it's. I think Aura's ten. I think. Yeah. I could never. But I played Witch Magic and Force Illusions to uh, get together. Oh and, my god! And in that early meta, that was early Legacies. Like that was a lot. There was a couple games of that after playing with Daniel on Saturday where I was like, I don't think I can beat that. Like it, I don't because he would just he would just discard all his cards to do damage and then lying in wait. <laughs> And then the turn would be over, and you'd be like, oh, that was super fun. You just killed me. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I thought that was, I always, like, a deck like that, because I think that deck had a ton of, of ceiling, but it also had that, that 
it took the randomness out of the dice because of, of, of Mother. To a certain extent. Sure. Yeah. Like, I mean, it just... Well, and Aura was one of the first characters out there who had... Did she have three damage? She had three damage yeah. sites that two, were free. Two. Yeah. And I, I realize there's a lot of characters out there with that now. Right. Um, and non-modifieds. But, she, I mean, she was one of the OG characters that had a bunch of damage. Yeah. She's a beast. Which was her design. Right. Um, which is why she only had 10 and why she was super expensive at 18. But... Um, yeah, because I, I look at the people that were playing Mother and Aiden... And then obviously Aiden has more hit points, right? Mm-hmm. And Aiden has the three. Aiden, I think, is going to be really good going forward. Yeah. I just don't know how yet. Yeah. I mean, Aiden has, she has three damage sides, right? Two, two, plus two, or is it just two? Uh, no, she's a two, two, two base, two base, but the two focus. The two focus, focus. that's right. Okay. Yeah. So um, I, I, I arguably felt, I feel much more comfortable playing against Aiden than I did ever did against Aura because she I just see. feel like she could just murder you. Like you just, your whole game plan would just come off well, the rails. Aura was 2-3-3. Three, three. I mean, that's a big difference. Right. Right? Of course, I was, I was really into 5-die villain and she feasted on that. Well, sure. Right. Yeah. But again, you were into 5-die villain because it was rainbow and I mean, that's right back to her. So, I, I don't heart, know. I heart 5-die villain. Yeah. So, next, next question I have for you is what do we do about Vader? Nothing. Just nothing? Let's let the card cycle and see what happens. Yeah. I mean, Rise Again goes away. Right. Bait and Switch goes away. Friends yeah. in High Places goes away. Friends in High Places goes Force away. Force Strike but goes Delve's away. still there. Yeah. But, I mean, there's going to be one way to cheat it in. I mean, I'm okay with that. I, I don't think... Does there? Do... Does there have to be a Yes, way? there has to be a way. I, I, don't think it, I don't think it needs anything done to it no, right we'll, now. We'll, we'll see what happens with uh, whatever... Um, you know the rumored proposed feed, that, whatever that, that Jeremy he, Jeremy promised or at least alluded yeah. to a feed. So we'll, we'll see if that changes anything. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I, I really, I don't, I don't think anything needs to be done right now. I know we as as the United States are done with our regionals. Mm-hmm. I'm, I've heard there's a few more European ones. I, oh, I was not aware of that. I, yeah. I, I did think last weekend was the last yeah, I, weekend. I, I'm gonna have to. Don't hold me to that. I'm after. Confirm that, but I believe there is a couple. Um, so I, I feel bad for those guys. They have to go through, and ladies, they have to go through like some more of the current meta. But one of the most brutal metas, I think. Yeah, <laughs> right. But since we're talking about regional season, and we were the last one, I would like to talk about what's like what's next. Sure. Right? What so. I have already put away all my cards. All yeah, I was working on it this weekend. Yeah. So um, I'm fully. You put a poll on our local on our local uh, Facebook page about like um, on Saturdays at Gongai. We, should we go to uh, uh, trilogies? Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, Victor, and I'm ready. Victor proposed it yesterday. He's yeah. like, why don't we just go to trilogies because that's what's going to matter going forward. Which right. to be fair, like a lot of the Arrowbrook guys have been saying since like November, right? right? But um, now that it actually yeah. is that time, I think I think that's fair. So we put the poll up. We'll we'll, we'll see. We have th- there are uh, amazing really guys. There are people in the Destiny world who aren't on Facebook and stuff. So what? we want to make sure we can talk to those people yeah, before sure. we make any changes. Well, I know one thing. I will be I will be playing trilogies from here on out. So if I show up on Saturday, it will be with okay. A trilogy that's deck, so good to I know. Mean, so we'll make sure to keep it standard then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, if you guys want a chance, that's probably what you should do. Yeah. So no, okay. So yeah, I mean, I think I'm done with this meta. Kind of yeah. mentally moving forward. I don't know where we're going to end up in the next one. I mean, we don't know the cards, so there's not even really any reason I'm speculating. So what's your, what's your what's your mood? Going like I know what your mood was yesterday about like I know what your mood was on Friday night, um, and then the day of the tournament. But now that it's all over and we're kind of looking at this new set and the new meta, what's your mood going forward? Um, I'm very looking. I'm very much looking forward to the new set because something else needs to happen. Like I, you know, I did. I did well. I exceeded my expectations on Saturday, but I didn't enjoy it. Right. Mm. I mean, from a. I was playing a game standpoint. I didn't enjoy it, right? Like, I didn't like playing that deck. It was tactical. It was mathematical. And I, that's fine. I can do that, right? But um, I didn't have fun doing it. Hmm. I feel I would have had a lot of more fun playing something else that I enjoyed more, right? Um, but that's me. There's a lot of people who just get the pure enjoyment from the other stuff. Right. So, and, and, that, and that is what it is. And there was yeah, a- so my, my mood is hopeful optimism that we're not going to end up right back where we are but i don't see vader i don't see vader reader going away sure. and that's got me very concerned right. uh i don't see i get it it loses a lot of toys but um this tribal format i think is going to introduce a lot of three wide implied sure and fear and dead men it's fear and dead men for the next year so how many fear and dead men did you eat this weekend at least four or five <laughs> It's a lot um, of fear and, and then, so the other thing is, you and I—I I wanted to hit on this too. You and I were actually talking. We saw zero, zero in the room 
Yoda Bush. Zero. And you and I were talking earlier in the week. I was like, I was this close to going Leia Bush. Uh, I think I still would have lost. I think I would have done worse right. because it just folds to Vader sure. Judo. Right, right. But man, was there some three wides to eat Yeah, on. you would have been eating the three wides for, for days. In fact, you're, you would have had a lot of time to walk around and scout the room after you Yeah. Well, I still, I still did. Actually, that's how I got all those videos. <laughs> but, um, no, but yeah, I ate a lot of Fear and Dead Men. And anyway, back to the original. Like yeah. With Fear and Dead Men, I... I really worry about standard right. because if the next set is really designed to do like three wides and in some cases four wides and fear of dead men is just there or Bush is there like yeah it's a strange design choice to put so many cards so much energy into designing these tribes and then have then you have like four or five cards that just end games with them yeah because they're not even silver bullets because there's so many of them. But, and they work against other stuff. Right, like it's still right, powerful exactly. even against a two yeah, wide. It's, so. it's it takes the advantage, the natural advantage of the three wide, and it it complete like fear and deadman removes that natural advantage, which sure. is I have more hit points. Well, it it scales to the number of characters you have. It's perfect. Yeah. Well, and either way, it's still good. Right. Right. So <clears throat> yeah, I, I I don't know. We'll 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 see where we're at. Um, I don't know. The, I expect, or at least early in the meta, I expect Phasma Trooper uh, advanced training to be a thing. Like mm-hmm. a five dice start with no blanks seems pretty good. Yeah. Like we're going to see that early. Uh, it's a super easy one to throw together too, right? Well, I think we'll see it both in Trilogy and, well, especially in Trilogy, but I think right. you'll see it in both. Um, we'll see. Do you mind if we uh, digress from the regional talk for just sure. a Sure. One, one more thing I wanted to note before we went on is uh, I wanted to give, a, again, a shout out to Pearl Yeti. Uh, I think he made a fantastic decision. So uh, for those of you who aren't aware, there was a little bit of controversy up in Washington about um, world seats and all that. Um, and what Sean did... <clears throat> is both first and second place going into the game had seats already. So he actually had them play third and fourth to decide who would get the world seat. Oh, okay. And I, I thought that was a really great move. I, I don't believe it was left up to people. I think he just made the decision. Good for him. Um, he'll have to speak on that, but I, I think that was the right way to do it. I don't think this weekend could have gone much better. Yeah. Um, so mad props to him. Shout out to PGS. Uh, good job, Artificery, on the streaming. Um, except that you had me as Andrew K all day first, first, first <laughs> but that's okay. Um, no, but seriously, top notch. Um, so I just wanted to make sure we got that shout out and plug in and put credit where credit's due. So, yeah. all right, what'd you have for me? So just real quick. So um, last night at Monday Night Dice, we did, we talked about this a little earlier. We mm-hmm. had the new player friendly event. Yeah, um, and it, worked, it went well. Uh, yeah, so funny enough, so all the normal crew shows up, right, ready to teach new players, and it's like 7.05, we start at 7, and everyone's kind of like, well, you know, maybe we'll get a, a player sure. next week or something. We were getting ready to play, and then out of nowhere, uh, these four people just walk into our play area and are like, "Are you? Is this the Destiny group?" And we're like, "What?" So, I made four. I made three <laughs> decks to give to people, thinking, oh, "I'm only going to have to give one of them, or maybe two of them away." Sure. I made a fourth one just on a whim at the last moment, yeah. using. So, so to be clear, the deal for so Mike runs Smugglers Run Gaming, yeah. and Smugglers Run Gaming's deal on Monday, and not really deal because that implies trade. Right. Yeah, there's no. Their trade. promotion <laughs> yeah. was: if you are a new player, you come, we give you a free deck built out of Trilogy's stuff. Yeah, it was yeah, it was all trilogy stuff, right? Yeah. So that it would be useful going forward. Thirty so cards. These people came in and they got a legit usable deck. Uh, the one girl that I was teaching, um, or woman, sorry, that I was teaching, you gave her Piet Mandos and like a pretty good Piet Mandos. <laughs> so like it's like the Smugglers Run did a really good job. Um, that's something to aspire to. If you have the resources to do it, I think that was yeah. great. So good job. Yeah, it was funny because it did it stretched it stretched my resources. So um, it, it felt so good to teach the game to new people. I kind of forgot what it was like to show someone the game for the first time and how fun that is and how mm-hmm. fun the game is when you're just like I was running uh, Gungans, mm-hmm. right? And you, I was I want to run something that was going to be slow and you know had a lot of different die sides and just I want it so I could teach people how to play. And uh, it was just, it was so good just to teach new players. And, and it was such a pleasure to, to meet new people. And um, so if you guys are in the community and you're, you're looking for ways to do it, if you have the resources, you can get together and, and you know, put a couple of decks together and invite some people and give it to them. Like I'm actually basically out of decks at this point. Like I, I well, really you had to, Mike had to crack open a two player starter last night yeah, or two, no, or no, give away your two player starter. Yeah, starters both my two player starters got packed into a deck and given uh, to someone. And it, it was great, but now, I'm gonna need my my 
commandos. I'm going to need my, my brothers and my sisters to come together and help me get more decks together. Sure. And that's part of this. is It's it's not just a store's responsibility. It's not FFG's responsibility. It's certainly not FFG's responsibility. Right, right. It is, it is our responsibility to do this. And if you... You know, if you're hoarding a bunch of stuff like that, you've then give it away, man. Help help grow the game. So anyway, thanks for all those that join us. We're gonna do it next Monday. If you're seeing this, I don't know why you would, but if if you are, yeah, well, I mean, I, I know I tried to bring somebody who couldn't make it last week. I know another one of our people in our community yeah. tried to bring someone who uh, couldn't make it last yeah. week. So I, I think you're gonna see more going forward. We're gonna need some more decks. Yeah, understood. <laughs> so, well, we will uh, do what we can. Okay. Um, but no, I thought that was a great thing. And interesting enough, I, I want to have an episode in the future at some point where we talk about community building um, and how you turn the corner from, right? I, I think a lot of the times when we're talking community building, we focus too much on just getting people there okay. and not keeping them. Mm. And then I want to do a whole episode kind of on how we turn the corner to making them a part of the community oh, as okay. opposed to just coming. Sure. Because um, I, you know, there's retention sure, there's yeah. attendance and there's retention right. and then there's engagement right and, and you, you make and you we really want to make connections right that's why we're there is, is to right to get to know people yeah and right. I think what you did last night which was you know teaching the group and then having them splinter out so they could meet with people I think was a, a good addition so uh, let's let's certainly uh, let's put a pin in it and okay. we'll come back to that in All a right. future episode sure. um, hopefully that can add some value to other parts of the community um, we probably won't do that for a couple of weeks because I'm anticipating a big set drop here within the next couple of weeks, right? Yeah. So then we'll have all sorts of new stuff to talk about. Oh, I'm, I'm very excited. Okay. So, uh, you know, I think that was it. Again, uh, I think we both had a great time at the regional. Uh, very well done. Um, I'm looking forward to – I really enjoyed Casual Night last night. Yeah. I was running Beckett Val. Um, we actually shot some videos. They'll be up soon. But they're not high-level videos. <laughs> right. They're just like <laughs> – right. Us it's, screwing around and it's yeah. kind of fun. Yeah, you know, and I really enjoy uh, uh, Symbio's videos on T3. Yeah, I, I really enjoy those because it's just a couple. It's just people that enjoy each yeah. other's company. And actually, shout out to that. So he did. Uh, he got them up today. I saw a bunch of them pop up today from the regional that they had in California. I think it was Mountain View or something. Oh, like right, that. right, yep. Uh, they had a regional. And he was doing the recording there. So please go check out Symbio's. Or sorry, T3 Gaming's channel. Symbio runs the Destiny site over there. Um, he's got at least five or six videos from yeah. the. Uh, regional down there so that's high high level gameplay um, but like Mike said you know most of the time he's doing fun level community gameplay which right. highly encouraged uh, but if you're looking for competitive gameplay go check out T3 give them a like and subscribe and help them grow cool okay do you have anything else go commando go commando <laughs>